and he thankfully is with us to talk to us tonight by telephone. Uh, Mr. Bell, uh, did I get your ordeal more or less correctly? Hi, Brian. Yes, you did. I was. I got to the building at approximately 8:45, and you switch at 78th to the 102nd floor. I walked in the elevator, hit the button, like you said, for 102, and that's the moment the plane hit. And at that second, the jolt was incredible, and everything turned dark, and there was nothing but fire. Um, I had to run through about 20 feet of fire. Found a Port Authority office that I ducked into, and. Uh, for, you know, fortunately, there was a gentleman in this, in this office that was a fire marshal that knew how to get us out of there. And as we were leaving, a woman who was probably in the same elevator car with me, who was severely burnt, um, appeared. And, she, and the, someone just stepped out of nowhere. His name was Avi. He worked for Cantor Fitzgerald and said he's going to take her down. She's not going to be left behind. And he, you know, heroically to help this woman down the stairs. The three of us run our way down when firefighters who were coming up saw us and they, they made sure that we you know we got out of the building quickly and uh, you know it's it's kind of fortunate for us at the same time we did get burned that you know we did get out of the building before the masses we, we passed hundreds of people on the way down and we got into the basement and this woman who was really burned when she was put on a gurney right away and I was told to get out of the building on the Barclay Street exit because the building was not stable get out fast and so you know I ran I jumped into an ambulance like you said and four blocks we, we drove four blocks away where we picked up a police officer who was injured by falling debris while being treated his radio was going off and going off and he just said I'm fine he just stopped he refused further treatment to go back to the scene at which time the ambulance was called in and was told to go back uh, they were setting up a camp outside the outside the doors and I Following the advice of this, of this building engineer, I just said, this building's not stable. And I, I, I said, I, I can't, I, I had to get out of the ambulance. I got out of the ambulance and it went back to the building. Stood on West Street and watched the building fall five minutes later. Wow. Um, you, I you, hope they got out. You're the third person I've heard mention the firm Cantor Fitzgerald today. Some of these firms are so heavily hit with casualties. Uh, every firm in the building has nothing left to go back to. Uh, if you had any irreplaceable photos, mementos, files on your desk, as, as has occurred to you, it's all gone. Uh, are all the people in your firm safe? Do you have any on the missing list? They, they, I was one of eight people in our firm that were in the building, and I'm the only one that is accounted for. They're all, all others are missing? And my, I just want to extend my deepest sympathy and um, extend whatever hope, anything for the families and friends of these people. And uh, thank all my friends at the same time and the people at Alliance Consulting for this tremendous support. It's been a horrible ordeal, Brian. Roy, it's unbelievable, and uh, I, I didn't work there. You did. It's the population of a small city, and I imagine, you know, you get to be friends with office mates, neighboring offices, see people in the various eateries in the neighborhood. It's like working in a small city as a part of a big city. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. I've never seen a town come together. And again, the firefighters. It was the firefighters who were coming up the stairs. They saw us being burnt. Uh, the, you know, we were very burnt, and they just said, "Get these people down fast." And you know, they they made sure we got out. And but these people were going up when we were going down, Brian. And it's the last. So many people. The last thing they saw of some New York City firefighters were them on their way up. And unlike a lot of businesses, especially in New York City, uh, th there's not a management versus labor separation that's so acute in the firefighters business the brass are in there commanding the men and women they are driving the fire coverage they are getting their hands dirty and doing the work and that's why so many of the brass are on the list of dead and missing it's just it is heartbreaking well mr. Uh, mr. Bell we want to thank you very much for coming on the air and best of luck with your recovery best of luck to those in your firm who are not yet accounted for and uh, uh, for uh, speaking for all those who've been watching this coverage for so many days, your name and all their names join the list of uh, names that people are hoping and praying for. Thank you.